Thank you, uh, thank you, Zuba. Nice to uh, nice to speak with you all. Let me share my screen. Hopefully now you'll be able to see my screen. If you just confirm that. Ah, uh, that looks great. Okay, uh, talk to you soon with uh, the queries. You have twenty minutes. Thank you so much. Okay, no problem. Yeah, lo lovely to uh, lovely to speak with you all, and thank you so much for taking the time to, you know, learn a bit more about gravity. But also, what we want to talk about today is, as the slide suggests, the rise of the service management ecosystem. So this is a term that we have coined internally uh, for the time being, and ultimately, what we want to go through, we want to take you through a small journey essentially as to the challenges some of our customer base are currently experiencing with a number of different protocols and the number of different ways of communicating that have been driven by the rise in or the need we should say for more real time more event driven architectures and stuff like that and how you can enable your consumers right to be able to more easily discover to be more, to be more easily able to interact with these back-end services in a very standardized way, in a way that they are more familiar with. And this is what, and our response to that is what we call the service management ecosystem. So these are the things that we'll go through today, um, which we'll touch on. We'll then touch on one of the points that often is raised with us is, you know, okay, you talk about this concept of the service management ecosystem, which we will come on to. But there's also a question that's often raised, which is, and where is the line between typically technologies like ESVs? So we'll cover that as well. And then we'll sort of finalize by talking about how gravity can help you. Okay, so let's look, let's take the this scenario. This is actually a real scenario, right? This is not hypothetical. So in this particular scenario, we have a customer. In this case, it's a, uh, a large postal service for Western Europe. So they deliver parcels and letters and things to, to people's doors. Now, understandably, th this type of business gives rise to them wanting to be able to, just like if you're on Amazon or anything where you've ordered something and you want to track where it is, they do exactly the same sort of concept. So it's, it's very naturally event driven, that type of um, use case. Now that's one particular use case, but there's many other use cases, right? And what they've chosen, they've chosen obviously Gravity as their API platform, but they've also chosen Apache Kafka um, to be able to provide them with the publish subscribe sort of architecture. Now, that's great. Architectural choices make perfect sense. And it, you know, it, it's an interesting sort of scenario that they have. And as I said, this is not limited specifically to this sort of parcel scenario or anything like that. There's, there's a big rise. Now, that's essentially what we're talking about is it's, there's a, this increase in the number of different technologies and mechanisms of communication that people use nowadays. And what this causes is a business pain. And the pain is how can your consumers easily be able to consume data from all these different technologies in a consistent and discoverable and secure way. That's that's the, the key three things, right? Consistent, discoverable, and secure. Because that's ultimately what the business, the business is not necessarily interested in the underlying technology. It's interested in being able to give to its consumers data in a nice, secure, easy way that isn't going to cause them problems in the future, right? So that's the business problem at the moment. And it's being driven by this, what we call the rise of the protocol. So <clears throat> it might sound like something out of sort of Star Wars or Star Trek or something. It, it's not, um, it's something I came up with. So um, you'll have to attribute it to me if you want to uh, want to use this. Um, but um, you can see here, this, this is just a very um, cursory overview, just in my mind, you know, this is just our interpretation of what we see happening at the moment and what we've seen change over the last sort of, you know, four, three, three decades or so. OK, so we're seeing this growth, this growth, as you can see here from this arrow in the number of protocols. So the complexity of the communication that's taking place between things. 
And it's being driven by a number of different factors. The, uh, the, the three primary ones that I see and that we see as an organization that are driving this type of growth is an architectural choice. So people moving more towards sort of microservices and the, the type of standardizing of communication between these modularized sections of functionality, shall we say. There's a greater desire and demand for more real time, more event driven related stuff. So as we spoke about in the law, in the use case that we're discussing here, the uh, parcel, the parcel scenario, they, people want to understand where their parcel is right now, when it's going to be here, all that sort of stuff. And then also the introduction of greater things like more devices. So now it's not just about machine to machine or person to machine and stuff like that. You've also got sort of thing to machine. So these little objects that are around as well, which are creating this plethora of data. Okay, so it's given, it's not that people I think are just coming along going, hmm, you know, you fancy a new protocol today. It's actually being driven by these demands, okay, in the growth towards more real time, more data, more real time, and more insightful data and modularizing code so you can make updates more quickly and all this sort of stuff. So that's really what is driving it. Now, you can see here that in some ways this is problematic. Let's just look at the last column, okay? This is probably just a, a portion that immediately came to the top of my head as to what we see on a fairly regular basis, okay? So you've now, obviously, you've still got a lot, like quite, quite a lot of what we would now probably term legacy protocols, so things like um, SOAP and um, XML-based integrations and stuff like that. But what we're also now seeing is that obviously REST has been sort of a de facto standard for a period of time. But on top of that, you're seeing things like gRPC, Kafka, GraphQL, and also with the IoT side of things, MQTT, but sometimes also MQP as well, HTTP2, HTTP1, all these different standards, protocols, whatever we want to call them, they're there and people are using them. And it creates that business pain. It creates the business pain, which is there's not a standardized way for people to be able to consume the data and to be able to get the value from the organization. Because let's go back to the actual challenge. The challenge for the business, the business, modern day businesses, right? Their front door, their, a lot of their front door is a digital front door, right? And their ability to be able to undertake business with people is a lot is significantly driven by their ability to expose and interact with data effectively so it's a key requirement for the business to be able to allow the consumers you know it's not all that the back-end services are all in this sim one simple technology and that's the challenge is they need to get the value out of all of these different technologies and into the hands of the consumers in a simple discoverable and secure way so this is the challenge that's presented by the rise of the protocols. So the next step that we talk about is the rise of the service management ecosystem. And that's essentially the talk, right? The unified service management ecosystem. And this is our view on the way to address this particular point, okay? So the first sentence here really says it probably better than I can say, which is what, you know, this is the antidote to the problem. Let's let's remind ourselves of the problem. The problem is you've got all of these different technologies, these different standards, these different protocols, and you haven't got a consistent, secure way of interacting with those and discovering those different technologies. So the service management ecosystem is there to provide that, to provide a consistent, secure, well-defined and discoverable technology agnostic very, very important is technology agnostic interface. So as you can see from this, REST, SOAP, GraphQL, gRPC, Kafka, etc. they all have different ways of communicating, different standards, different things that you have to do to be able to make them work, right? So our principle or our thought process here that we're working with our customers on and we're introducing as part of the Gravity platform and we've already started this process, so it's not just a sort of thought, um, is that 
what is the what is the most well known? What what is the one that people seem to be able to understand and interact with most easily? And in our opinion, it's things based built on top of the HTTP protocol. Okay, and using things like REST and stuff like that. So, of course, because you're looking at streaming technologies and things of that nature, you'll have to start considering additional things on top of the HTTP protocol, like web sockets and stuff like that. But we think that's much, you know, it's a much more standardized and well-defined way that rather than having all these, you know, five, ten different ways of interacting, you're interacting in a fairly standardized way. Like if we take the streaming example, from a, if you're looking at the technical layer, you're making the, the HTTP connection and you'll also would then be sending an upgrade message to upgrade it to a secure WebSocket connection to create that persisted bi-directional flow of data, right? So you don't necessarily have to understand how to interact with the Kafka topic or anything like that. You're, you're sending what is a fairly well understood and well known HTTP um, message, for example, um, in a sort of restful way um, to the con to the consumer. And this is exactly what the Gravity Gateway, the Gravity API platform will provide, okay, and does provide. It's this, it's the abstraction on top of all of these different technologies, okay? So whether it's Kafka, AMQP, REST, SOAP, GRPC, GraphQL, whatever it is, doesn't matter. All right, all your consumers have to do, and the real, real, real benefit to this, right? If we come back to the business problem, the business pain and the business problem is discoverability, the ability to be able to interact with an easy way. And that's where things like async API and open API come in. It's about easier discoverability for consumers and stuff like that. So what gravity will give you the capability to be able to do here is to enable your consumers to discover your APIs in a very standardized way from things like developer portals, and also to give you the capability from a security perspective to continue to apply things like OAuth 2 types of, um, you know, OAuth 2 types of workflows, JWT, that, that sort of thing, and the ability to apply traffic shaping policies. So your, your things like quotas, rate limits, uh, spike arrests, things like, um, threat protections, all this sort of stuff, the, the stuff that's become very well ingrained in the API space, but rolling this out to a much wider array of technologies and giving your consumers a very neat and standardized way of discovering and engaging with your business in a, in, you know, in the technology, in the sphere of um, technical integration, if you will. Okay. So, where is the line? The line, the, this, we probably need to clarify what we mean by where is the line. So a lot of people, when we sort of speak to them about this, they, one of their natural reactions is to say, oh, this sounds quite a lot like um, and what an ESB might do, for example. And we don't necessarily agree with that. We think that the line, and it's quite simply put here, is one of complex composition. If you're, if you're going down the route where you want to apply a lot of business logic in your middleware layer and you want to start saying, well, based upon this response from here, I want to do this and then I want to get data from here and then I want to add this to it. And I want to do like transform it in this way and stuff like this. You can you can do that in the in the API gateways in the in platforms of this nature. Is it the most performant place and the best place to do it? We believe actually when you're starting to go down the route of complex composition, that is more suitable for an ESB-like technology. The service management ecosystem should, where possible, be more focused on point-to-point -point communication. So it's about presenting a standardized and consistent interface into all of your disparate technologies, regardless of the technology, right? If we come back to that original statement, it's about providing a technology agnostic interface, but one which is secure and well-defined, okay? That is the service management ecosystem. So, in relation to that, how, how does gravity actually support in relation to that? So our focus as an organization is on being the easiest to use, the most performant, and the most cost-effective API platform. 
And everything that we do is built within this sphere, okay? So if we look at what Gravity currently offers in terms of our capability offering here, you can see that this naturally will fit this, this what we are calling our connectors API or our connectors capability naturally fits within the API management and the access management ecosystem. And the reason why you know, it naturally fits within our platform is that the service management ecosystem is not just about um, pure technical points and stuff like that. It's also about the ability to be able to still provide secure, consistent, well-defined and discoverable. And Gravity is fairly uniquely positioned in the fact that our solution offering provides both API management and access management. So the connector, right, the connector to these different backend technologies will be provided within the API management solution. But you'll continue to be able to use things like alerting, access management, all this sort of stuff to be able to make sure that you actually provide the security, the alerting, and all the other things that come around it, which ultimately are linked to the business case, right? Coming back again to the business case, the business, the business pain, I should say, is that they want to be able to provide that consistent interface, regardless of the technology, regardless of the technology, to be able to allow your consumers to be able to discover and to be able to interact with your business in a technical way. And this is what Gravity will uniquely be able to provide in this context. So I think that's it from the presentation. Um, any questions at this particular point? And David, anything from anything from your side at all? <clears throat> Nothing from my side, Rory. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Rory and uh, David. Uh, one of the questions I have from my uh, side is, uh, uh, in terms of your uh, capabilities, uh, what are your other focus areas what uh, Gravity offers? What are our other focus areas in terms of our yes. solution offering? Yes, yes. Uh, could you shed yeah. some light on that? Yeah, so from, from our perspective, so what Gravity, Gravity is focused on two core areas, API management and access management. And we, so we have everything that, you, that one would expect from an API platform. So the ability to discover and expose your APIs, shape your traffic, apply security, all this sort of stuff. It, but when we, we've also got an identity and access management solution, which we call Access Manager. And so these are the two core parts. Access Manager is the OpenID Connect certified part of our platform. So this enables, for example, our banking customers to get best practice, um, best in class capabilities from the perspective of you know, secure integration and stuff like that using old two types of workflows and JWT. So they're the two core parts, API management and access management. On top of that, as the slide showed, we also provide the capability from an alerting perspective to real to alert people in real time based upon events that are taking place in the platform and also you have the cockpit feature which enables users to be able to design their api so think of a mind map and you can design your apis in a very nice visual way so rather than having to write swagger and open api specification you can design this in you can design this in um the api designer and then what you can do is go and automatically deploy that to your gateway. So it's a complete, our focus very much comes back to ease of use, speed of use, and the most cost-effective platform. So we want to make sure everything that people do, they can simply design stuff very easily in a visual way to allow business users to be able to do stuff, deploy it, they click the button, they get mocked services straight away. And that, that's our focus <laughs> as an organization, API management, access management, alerting, like API design in a very, very seamless and easy way. And then of course, we'll be adding the service management ecosystem to this. So one thing I probably missed in the presentation actually is that this is not, I think I mentioned this is not something that's a million miles away. It's something that we've already introduced. So if you look in the Gravity platform now, you can import a whistle, for example, and it will automatically build all the validation policies for your SOAP service and it will create a RESTful interface automatically based upon the SOAP backend. And you'll be able to do this for Kafka, for AMQP, for MQTT, all these different protocols. So that's the it's it's a you know it's a big platform and it has a huge amount of capability. 
that's that's very good uh, thank you for uh, that question we have a question from uh, brain uh, he, uh, he asked uh, does gravity support a distributed model where you can have a single portal linked to distributed gateways so uh, i would repeat yeah. it again yeah i would repeat yeah. again does gravity support a distributed model where you can have single portal linked to distributed gateways yeah for sure yeah so you can um, in gravity the concept is called um, sharding tags and so what you can do is from a single portal you can go and you could have for example public uh, public gateways and private gateways and from one portal you can then say hey i want to deploy this api over to this one and this api over to this one and you can use policies that are within gravity for example like our dynamic routing policy to make choices in those gateways as to which backend services they call dynamically and stuff like that so yeah for sure that's interesting so uh, if i have to summarize and if we could please correct me if i'm wrong uh, so what gravity offers is the ease of uh, using different uh, uh, different protocols uh, of communication channels which is not only restricted to http but there is a uh, graph there is kafka there is all other different protocols and which you could manage at one one single uh, platform i mean apart from uh, other uh, other uh, features what what you discuss for sure yeah that's so that's definitely, that's definitely that's definitely the future um and you know we as we said we've already gone on that journey but you're right our focus is on ease of use speed of use and being the most cost effective that sounds good and i particularly like the design first approach uh, which uh, this morning mike was also uh, discussing is that is where uh, the 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 future and that is where the communication is heading towards and it's good to know that you guys uh, all already have that into your uh, offerings yeah i think that's an interesting point i do think that that's one of the you know we don't see it a huge amount in the market at the moment the people that companies are able to utilize but gravity certainly does provide it, which is this you know a true api design first approach with this visual interface to drag you know um you know think about a mind map where you can go and just like say yeah. oh i want to have this bit and this bit and it automatically forces you down the route of creating a compliant open api specification based on that that's awesome awesome Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Rory. Do you have any closing remarks uh, before we, uh, we start for the uh, look for the next talk? Um, nothing in particular. Just to say thank you all for your time. It was a pleasure to speak with you. And um, please do stop by our stand. We'd love. We've got a booth today. Um, we'd love to hear from you and understand how we can support you. And um, you know, feel free to get in contact with us at any time. We're always uh, we're a friendly bunch of people. So. If ever you want help or just some advice on what you're doing in your API landscape, feel free to ask us. That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Rory and David. Uh, uh, have a great day. Then. You too. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.